So welcome to December. Yay! Happy, very joyous December. Are you looking forward to the holidays? Yes. Yes. Not everybody said yes. <laughs> As Charlene sang, maybe this Christmas it'll be different for you. But you have to. As a spiritual seeker, I know that we can create the life we want and that our spiritual journey through the month of December can be joyous, peaceful, and exciting. And for some people, December is not about that. I think for the majority of the world, we think about December and the holiday season and we think about it's a time for children. It's really their time, right? with all the excitement that they have. And so honoring the child within each of us, the next three Sundays, I'm going to be doing a talk on different Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> Yay! So I would like to begin this week sharing with you a Dr. Seuss story that I was not familiar with until a few years ago. And this is the story of the Zack. In case you've not heard about the Zack, let me just share this story with you. One day, making tracks in the prairie of Prax, came a north-going Zack and a south-going Zack. I flipped the page. <laughs> And it happened that both of them came to a place where they bumped and they stood foot to foot, face to face. Now look here, the north going Zack said. I say, you're blocking my path. You're right in my way. I'm a north going Zack and I always go north. Get out of my way now and let me go forth. Who's in whose way, snapped the south going Zack. I always go south, making south-going tracks. So you're in my way, and I ask you to move and let me go forth in my south-going groove. <laughs> then the north-going Zack puffed up his chest with pride and said, I never take a step to one side, and I'll prove to you that I won't change my ways if I have to stand here for 59 days. And I'll prove to you, yelled the south-going Zack, that I can stand here in the prairie of cracks for 59 years. For I live by a rule that I learned as a boy back in south-going school. <laughs> Never budge. That's my rule. Never budge in the least. Not an inch to the west, not an inch to the east. I'll stay here, not budging. I can and I will. If it makes me and you and the whole world stand still. Oh. Well, of course the world didn't stand still. The world grew. And in a couple of years, the new highway came through. And they built it right over those two stubborn Zack and left them standing there, unbudged in their tracks. How much are you like the Zack? Some of you probably think, mm, no, that's not me. Do you barrel through this holiday season not paying attention to the people around you? The two Zacks, as they were walking in the prairie of cracks, were paying no attention to anything around them, and that's why they bumped. They came face to face, foot to foot. <laughs> They weren't paying attention to what was going on in the outside world. They were absorbed in themselves. Do we ever get absorbed in ourselves? Yeah. And don't really notice what's happening outside? Have you ever driven somewhere and then realized when you got there that you don't remember the drive? I think that's called being on autopilot. 
So how much of our life is lived on autopilot? Not really aware of what's going on and who's around us. So that's our first point today, is awareness of our beliefs about the season, about the holiday season. What are your beliefs there? Think about that for a moment. What are you expecting? And where did your beliefs come from? In USA Today, there was a report that was done by an organization that does a lot of studies for churches. It's called the Pew Forum, that's P-E-W, <laughs> Pew Forum on Religious and Public Life. And the study showed that 66% of adults in the United States were still tied to the religion of their parents and grandparents. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but be aware, are you really embracing the beliefs that you have, and are they working for you, or do they work against you? The Zacks learned in North Point School and South Point School, never budge, not an inch to the west, not an inch to the east. How much of our philosophical beliefs are this is the way it has to be. This is the way December unfolds. Now you may tweak that, and some people have, and they've tweaked it to say, I'm not a child anymore, so this season holds nothing for me. I don't have grandchildren. I'm not expecting any presents. So it's just a time to get through. Or some people are very excited about the season because they know that their children are going to love this and they like to see it through their kids' eyes. We all have that inner child within us. And so allowing that inner child to come forth, to play in this time of year, and whether you're by yourself or whether you're with a whole group of family, try experiencing this season different. As Charlene sang, maybe this Christmas, maybe this Christmas, it's time to do something different so that your life can really shine and the spirit within you can shine forth. Are you expecting a December to remember? Or are you expecting a nightmare that will just be endured? Seriously. It's really your choice. What do you expect? What is that belief that you hold about the holidays and how you'll move through them? And it's your choice of what you want to do. You see, the Zach couldn't give up the belief that they had as children. And that belief might have served them very well as children to learn to be committed to something. But as adults, was it serving them to stand there for all those years, letting the highway come through and build around them and over them? What in our life are we holding on to so tightly that we don't allow our beliefs to change, even if they're obsolete for us, even if they're no longer working? Do you have some beliefs in your life that are like that? You can change those, but it takes conscious awareness that we have the belief in the first place and owning that so that then we can move forward and choose something different. Can you see how a little flexibility on the place of the Zach could have made their life so much better? Maybe they would have gotten where they're going instead of standing in the middle of the prairie of Prax. Maybe your life would get you where you want to go if you allowed yourself a little flexibility, if you were able to change some of your beliefs. Certainly my belief about how I view God has changed over the 20 years in New Thought philosophy, and it continues to change. And I don't feel too bad about that because I'm continuing to grow and to learn. And I'll tell you that Ernest Holmes, our founder, 
considered his philosophy to be open at the top. He was looking at how does he need to change as he got more information, as he learned more and experienced more life and talked to more people. He wanted to know how can I change or how do I need to change my philosophy to be relevant today. And so when you read early Ernest Holmes books, the way he relates to spirit, to God, is a little different than what you'll see in the later books he wrote. He was more inclusive in the later books. He didn't use all the male pronouns. He was a little more sensitive to some of those features and to being inclusive and had more names to use for God than just God because so many people have a problem with relating to that word God. So he would call it spirit, divine intelligence, infinite source, nature. It didn't change spirit. It didn't change God. It was just a different name that would allow other people to relate to spirit at that time. So his beliefs, his verbiage changed over his lifetime. And I tell you that so that you know your beliefs, your way of speaking and relating to spirit can change over your life too. Don't be a Zach, unless that's where you really want to be. So our second point is how do we change our beliefs? And we change our beliefs through repetition. In the book, Questions and Answers on the Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes was asked a series of questions, and one of the questions is, please explain your method of dissolving a false belief. So a false belief might be the way you think December needs to unfold for you. And is it really your truth? Does it really work for you? Ernest says, repetition is the key. A false belief is dissolved and replaced in the subjective by repetition in the truth. This involves a right about face, a mental action toward well-being, and away from habitual negativity. He goes on to explain that if you put drops of clear water into a bottle of muddy, wa muddy water, that as you continue to add the drops of clear water, the water in the whole bottle will clear up until at last, the last drop of clear water dissipates the muddy water completely. So we can change our beliefs, but it takes repetition, just like putting in the drop of clear water to change. It doesn't happen like that. It might take a while to change, but we continue to repeat it so that we're able to make that change in ourselves and in our thinking. I like this quote from Ernest, and I use it a lot, especially when I feel like I'm under pressure, when I have a lot of deadlines to meet. And I will say this, I think with clarity, move with ease, and accomplish without strain. Will you say that with me? I think with clarity, move with ease, and accomplish without strain. That can be our December our holiday season, that we can have peace, that we can move with ease, and that we can accomplish all we need to without strain. It's our choice of how we're going to relate to life and allow that to happen. In this same book, Ernest was asked, when I don't know how to handle a problem, how can I receive guidance? So for some people, it's a problem trying to change beliefs because they don't know what they're doing. How do I change this belief? What should I do? And he answers, obtaining the solution to any problem through inner awareness involves a definite piece of scientific and spiritual work. Clearing the mind of all adverse thought and being receptive to truth, speaking the word definitely and having unfailing faith in the power of the word. He goes on and gives an affirmation here that you can use daily. And so whatever your affirmation can be 
for how you want to show up in December and how you want the holiday season to unfold for you. It's the repetition that you can do that will change that belief, that will move you into what you want to create for yourself and your own life. But it takes conscious awareness. Awareness as the beginning. And then understanding where our belief came from and if it's something we want to change, how do we want to change it? Neil Donald Walsh said, all change is, should say is, not if, oops, all change is for the better. There is no such thing as change for the worse. Change is the process of life itself. And that process could be called by the name evolution. Evolution moves in only one direction, forward and toward improvement. So are we improving our lives? We can because we're always evolving. Once you learn something, you can't go back and unlearn it. So once you know that you have a choice in life, and that you can create a better holiday season for yourself. It's up to you to do that. You can't unlearn what you have just heard. So change is for the better. In Science of Mind, we often say there is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. And so recognizing that we are one with the divine, we are one with our higher power, and we create just as God creates. We create our own world. And so we will create our holiday season. If we want to create it in misery, we're welcome to do that. And if we want to create it in peace and joy, we can do that too. How exciting. It's up to us. We get to, to choose. So remember the words that Charlene sang. Maybe this Christmas is the year to reach out to someone you lost contact with. Maybe this year is the time to forgive someone and to live from love. Maybe this Christmas will be different, but it is your choice. Our third and final point here is that we are always at choice. We are at choice and it's up to us to make the decision of how we want life to be. We know that we can change our beliefs, we can change our philosophy, and we have done that. As spiritual seekers coming to this center, I know that many of you have made big changes in your philosophical beliefs. And so recognizing that you can continue to change your life, continue to make it what you want, it's your choice. And I hope that you have fun unwrapping the present that you give to yourself of a wonderful, joyous holiday season. Remember, ooh, the power of choice. Remember awareness of your beliefs about the holidays. Be conscious of that and release beliefs that no longer serve you. And know that you can choose the beliefs that will give you the most expanded, most peaceful, most blessed holiday season. Gandhi said, you must become the change you want to see in the world. It's our choice. Maybe this Christmas will be your best year yet. Expect it, know it's coming, and open yourself to it, because it's your choice. Let us pray. I know that as we turn within, we take in these words for ourselves. We understand that it is our choice and we become aware of our beliefs. And in knowing and understanding our beliefs, we choose those that serve our highest and best good. Those that bring us to the most peaceful, joyous, and loving life. 
And so we open ourselves and expectation for a December to remember, for a time of loving connection, for a time of doing good in the world and being the expression of God that we choose to be. We are the change that we want to see in the world. I claim it, I speak my word for it, and I know it is the truth. I release my word, knowing that the universe of law always says yes. And together we say, and so it is.